Hi everyone, I'm Rayo from Instantly and I wanted to create this video to talk about ways how you can optimize your cold email campaigns to get even better results than you're currently getting. So this video is aimed towards people that already have email campaigns running, they already know the basics, uh, but they just want to get more out of their email results. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you really want to do before jumping into uh, more advanced techniques is to make sure that your um, basics are covered. So even if you know that they, you've set them up, it's super important to make sure that they're actually done correctly and that they work. So the first thing you want to do is confirm that your email accounts have been set up properly. So I'm talking mainly about SPF DKIM DMARC. So sometimes people add these records uh, with mistakes in them. So you technically have them uh, in your DNS records, uh, but they don't work. So one thing you want to make sure is that they actually work as well. And there's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, the easiest way is in instantly in your email account screen, you can click the uh, check domain setup button and it will tell you if it's done correctly or not. Uh, we also talk about it in the uh, guide below. I will also link it in the description so you can check that out there. Then what you want to do is confirm that your email accounts are warmed up properly. So this usually means two weeks, but it's even better if you can warm them up for, let's say, four weeks. Uh, but yeah, basically you want to make sure that your email accounts that you're using for uh, sending are actually warmed up. Then the next thing you want to make sure uh, is that your lead lists are verified. So this is to stop excessive bounces. And uh, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, but you really want to make sure that you're only sending to verified leads. Then you want to make sure that your custom tracking domain works. Uh, so if you're going to track opens or in the future, if you're going to track link clicks, you want to make sure you have your custom tracking domain set up. And uh, the last thing you want to check is that your sending domain is pointing to an actual website. So basically you want to make sure you have your forwarding set up correctly. So if you go onto your sending domain, it will redirect to your main website. And as I said, if you need any help with this, uh, there's a guide for everything. And I'll link that down below in the description. So the first thing you want to optimize is the sending and warm-up volumes. So the reason I have this Harry Potter picture here is uh, it's a it's a way you can visualize how warm up emails and cold emails work. So those are like two counteracting forces. Uh, cold emails are constantly working to ruin your sending reputation, and warm up emails are constantly working to build that reputation back up. So they're like kind of pushing and pulling each other. Um, so the first thing we tell people is that send about fifty emails per day per email account, including warm up emails. So this like. Uh, a safe range where you know you'll be fine and you won't burn your domains. Uh, but I want to make clear that it's not like a rule set in stone. It doesn't mean that if you're going to send 51 emails, your domain's going to be burned. So this is like a generic uh, guideline that we've seen consistently work. Uh, so that's one thing you want to confirm that you're, that's your sending volume. And another good rule of thumb is to split the volume of cold emails and warm up emails evenly. So that means that if you're going to send 50 emails total, you're going to send 25 cold emails and 25 warm up emails. Uh, so there's like a 50 50 balance. And now let's go over some scenarios you might encounter when you're uh, running your campaigns. So the first scenario is that you're sending, like I said, 25 cold emails and 25 warm up emails per day per account. Uh, but you start to notice that your open reply rates are dropping and consistently over a longer uh, period of time. So here, one thing you can do is uh, increase the amount of warm-up emails you're sending and decrease the amount of cold emails you're sending. So basically making like the good force push harder and the bad force like uh, tone it down a bit. Uh, so basically uh, what this illustrates is you can play around with the cold email and warm-up email uh, volumes uh, to basically either fix your account or be more aggressive with the cold side. And that's what scenario two is talking about. Let's say again, you're sending 25 cold emails and 25 warm-up emails per day per account and uh, you're completely happy with the results, you're getting great results, then what you can try doing is increasing the cold email side and decreasing the warm-up email side. Uh, so let's say going to a 30-20 split. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, depending on where you're at, you can play around with these volumes, um, depending if you need to increase your sending reputation or you have it in a place where you're super happy with it. So basically, uh, you can play around with that. Then what you can do is optimize your copy and a big portion of optimizing your copy is actually just testing because no one really knows what works in advance. So there's going to be a lot of people with different opinions. They're going to say, okay, this copy is bad. This copy is good. 
and a lot of people have experience and they know, but also a lot of people are kind of just guessing. So what I would recommend you to do is uh, just this. So first thing, write five completely different copies. Uh, just one short, one long, one straight to the point, one more vague. So you get like a, a variety of different copies. Then run a run campaigns with these copies. So you can use the AZ testing feature we have in instantly, just test all of them. Uh, let's say you at least want to have like a hundred emails sent for each of these copies, because you want to have like a, a number behind them so you can actually make uh, decisions. Then what you're going to do is pick a winning copy uh, from these five that you just wrote and now write another five variations of that winning copy. Uh, so you'll get another five, you will test them again the same way, and then you'll pick another winning copy from these five. So basically, you're always uh, testing different things. You're choosing what works best and then iterating on top of that, and then also choosing what works best. And then you just rinse and repeat, um, do that over and over again, uh, and you will land on a copy that works really well. Um, so yeah, basically just test a lot. Then another thing you can do with your copy is cleaning any HTML code in it. So even if you didn't like purposefully put it in there, sometimes when you're copying text over from some other source, it will uh, put some HTML code in your copy and you won't even see it. Uh, so you think you don't have it in there, but you actually reduce your deliverability quite a bit. Um, so for that, we have a button, uh, a paintbrush I can now, uh, my Loom uh, camera is like, right, let me see if I can uh, put it away for a second. So yeah, there's like a paintbrush um, icon at the bottom that you can click and you basically want to just highlight all your copy, click that, it will remove any HTML uh, that's there. And uh, yeah, then another thing you want to do is check out our copywriting masterclass. So I'll link that in the description as well, uh, but basically, it goes over different strategies, different copy types. So basically, if you're going to do the testing I talked about on the last slide, um, you can just choose some strategies there and already test copies that like the framework has been proven to work. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is uh, decide if you're going to disable open tracking or not. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to go over some uh, things regarding that. So. Uh, open tracking is good for tracking the overall health of your campaign. So you can see like, okay, I'm having a decent open rate. This means that deliverability is probably not my uh, issue. And uh, yeah, so basically you can like uh, diagnose what your campaigns are doing. But the other side of the coin is that uh, tracking opens is bad for your deliverability. So having open tracking on will reduce open rates on its own uh, because of the way open tracking works. And uh, I talk about it in a different video, which I can link in the description as well. But basically how you can approach open tracking is that you can keep it on at the beginning to just see the overall health of your sending accounts and your campaigns. And if that's uh, good and you think there's no issues with that, you can just improve your results with one single click, just going to the campaign options, disabling open tracking. And uh, yeah, you'll stop seeing what your open rate is, but you, you can be sure that it's better what it was previously because it will stop putting the tracking pixel in your emails, which means that there will be no attachments in it, which means that it will go to people's inbox more often. Then another thing you can do is optimize your leads. So the first thing you want to do is again, check out our lead mining masterclass. If you haven't already, uh, we talk about a bunch of good strategies in there. Um, talk about different sources where you can get your leads from, but basically optimizing your leads again is uh, is a testing thingy. You just want to make sure you test every aspect of uh, of lead mining. So basically, what you want to do is uh, test different locations. So even if you think your uh, target market uh, is X country and it works the best, you can try different countries, different locations, see how it goes there. Of course, depending on your business. Then what you can do is test different lead sources. So let's say if you've only used Apollo uh, for all the leads you've gotten, um, you want to make sure you switch this up. You can check out like Crunchbase, uh, Scrape LinkedIn. There's a bunch of different sources and we talk about it in the document uh, as well. Then other things you can test is different job titles. So a lot of people are going after like CEOs only. Uh, but the thing is that it's the hardest to get replies from them. They usually get the most emails. So basically you can test like uh, people on the lower ranks of the company uh, and yeah, just different job titles. Then you can test different niches. So basically uh, there are niches that are super saturated like e-com for example. So if you're only going after that, it 
it's probably a good idea to test some different niches, try to expand your offer a bit. Um, it's just easier that way. Then another thing you can test is different company sizes. So it's usually easier to get re uh, replies from smaller companies. Uh, so you can basically play around with the company sizes you're targeting and seeing where's like the sweet spot of um, uh, for you. Then some additional optimization techniques you can do is uh, disabling bad performers. So basically, if you have a campaign that's performing significantly worse than all your other campaigns, what you want to do is just stop that campaign because sending emails that land in spam emails that don't get opened, emails that don't get replied will only hurt your deliverability more. Uh, so you want to make sure that as soon as you detect that, you'll just disable, um, disable that campaign. Now, um, that brings me to the second point is checking your campaigns daily. So the only way you can actually detect these bad performers and disable them on time is when you actually go and check your campaigns every now and then. And usually I recommend doing it daily, just picking a slot from your calendar um, where you just check all your campaigns and make sure that they're doing okay. And that also brings me to the third point, which is pausing cold outreach when needed. And basically sometimes it's not just one campaign that's performing super bad, it's all of your campaigns. Uh, so then you have to make the decision to pause all of the cold email campaigns and just let warm up run again. Usually like a week or two does the trick, but basically it just builds back your reputation. And after you've uh, warmed them up again, you can restart your cold outreach and see if that made any difference. And finally, let's go over some KPIs you can focus on. So when you're doing this optimization and looking for what works and what doesn't, this helps you understand what you should be focusing on. So these are in the order of importance. Um, so the first thing is revenue. Um, basically, that's all your all businesses are going after, usually with their cold outreach and their sales in general, you wanna generate more revenue. So even if you have a campaign, let's say that got one reply, uh, but that reply was a positive one and that guy came on a meeting and actually bought from you, then that campaign uh, is showing a lot of promise. So even if there was just one reply, uh, compared to another campaign that let's say had a hundred replies, but all of them were negative, but you get the point. So basically not focusing fully on just the uh, replies, but actually looking at the revenue side as well. And uh, so one step down from that is positive replies. So not just replies, but actually also making sure that they're the positive ones and counting for those. Um, then we can look at the bounce rate. So basically uh, bounces are super bad for your sending reputation. So you wanna make sure that bounces are like around 1% of your total sent volume. Uh, so even that is more important than focusing on reply and open rates alone. Uh, another step uh, down below on the fifth spot is reply rate. So replies are obviously good that's what we want to get but focusing fully on those like i said previously can be pretty misleading because those replies might be negative um, they might be uh, something you're basically not going after and the last spot is open rates so basically open rates are only good for measuring like the overall health of your campaigns but they're not a metric uh, that you should be focusing on that you should be like optimizing around because um, basically yeah open rates can fluctuate. There are privacy features that make it make the open rate uh, too low. There are bots that pre-scan emails that like inflate the open rate even though no one opened it. So yeah, open rate is like a diagnostic tool, tool and uh, you shouldn't make decisions based around open rate alone. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe if you like these kind of videos. We'll be making more in the future. Thanks and bye-bye.